Hello everybody, this is Sam and today we're going to be going over the uh, various tools that you could use to implement haptics in game. So there's uh, various ways that you can apply haptics using uh, several of our tools uh, shown as follows. Uh, you can use the uh, designer where you uh, create haptic patterns from scratch, which then you can import it into the developer portal where you can actually uh, bind haptic patterns to uh, game events. And uh, eventually you'll be li linking it to your game using the uh, SDK. Here we're on the main page of the uh, Be Haptics Designer. This is where you basically start your uh, haptic creation and integration journey. So over here we have a, a different templates that you can access. Uh, you can either create a new pattern right off the bat, or you can just access uh, different specific haptic patterns that, me that meet uh, specific uh, actions. This area over here shows you uh, recently created haptics or um, haptics that you made previously. Over here is just a little tab area that gives you access to a library and different patterns and such. And over here, um, by hitting run, um, you can actually uh, open up your B Haptics player app. So from here, let's move on over to the pattern tab. Here we have a list of uh, pre-made haptics, all available for you to uh, check out. On the left side over here shows you what each uh, haptic pattern is uh, or what device each haptic pattern is associated with. In this case, it's uh, associated with the vest. Got the name. And if we look over here, uh, it gives you a description of what this uh, haptic pattern is for. If it has a specific tag, it's going to be shown right next to the name. This one doesn't have any. If there's a media file associated with this haptic pattern, it's going to be shown over here. This shows you the duration of the, uh, the haptic, and this shows you the date when it was last created or when it was last revised. And if we click on play, this will show you the uh, specific points on of, uh, where the haptics occur, right there. Uh, if we click on tag, this actually shows you all the available tags you can find with uh, in regards to the uh, haptics, but let's type in. You can also find in spe find specific uh, haptic patterns by typing in their name for this one. Let's look test. So yeah, here we go. This one it shows that uh, this haptic pattern is integrated with uh, two different devices. It's got its uh, tags, description, and uh, we also have a tab of um, different devices here. If I click on each one. Yep, and this will uh, filter out um, specific haptic patterns based on that uh, filtered um, device. So in this case, tax suit for arms, visor. So yeah, you can just kind of go around and find the specific pattern and device that you're looking for. Okay, let's uh, move on over to the library tab. Over here, we have a core uh, file, which uh, contains a list of a uh, bunch of pre-made haptics from B-Haptics. And over here is uh, haptic patterns created by um, the user. And as we see over here, it shows you, as we, as we talked about earlier, the uh, different um, devices that this specific pattern is associated with, uh, the name and even the description, as well as the, um, the, t uh, the, uh, the tag, duration, and everything. Yep. Shows you um, what each of these actions, uh, uh, or, the, or more specifically, the patterns of each uh, haptic uh, when they're in play. So moving back to the home screen, um, we'll look at the uh, different templates over here. Create new haptic pattern. Um, dynamic hit gun uh, recoil, but for this, uh, let's uh, create a new haptic pattern. First, we'll be starting with uh, selecting the device that you want to use. Um, in this case, let's go with tax suits. We can put in a title. Uh, we'll call this uh, hit one or hit two. And then we can even set the duration. We'll set it to two seconds. And we can also uh, Create a we're going to create a pattern with this, and then media. We can also add a media link, and whatnot. We can also add different tags as well too. So let's just uh, put in action. Um, we'll call it. We'll add in head as well too. Close that. 
And then if we want to add in the description, uh, let's just say this is for um, uh, testing purposes. And then you just have to hit create. And there we go. So over here, we're going to start looking at ways where we can add different layers to the haptic uh, pattern. Uh, that's true. Um, we can do so by adding different uh, dots, paths, free paths, etc. This is the uh, your canvas uh, where you basically will start your creation and such. Here you'll be able to monitor uh, the specific points of where the uh, haptic feedback occurs. Here you can add different um, effects and different layers uh, as you're creating your haptic patterns. And this area over here is where you can add uh, different uh, sequencing uh, to your layers. Here we'll talk about the um, editor uh, interface. So if we look at the menu panel up here, we can actually change the name to let's just call this uh, hit two two and then we can also adjust the uh, duration uh, we'll keep it at two seconds and if we look at the top corner there you can also choose the device on, the, on uh, which um, devices that will work with your haptic patterns and if we move over to the left we have the uh, effect and layer panel we'll hit that new effect and yeah, we can just add in different uh, points, um, even use the path. Have to make connections, or we can also just freely draw the haptic patterns as well, too. And you can also adjust, um, if you take a look at the, uh, the right side over there, the right panel, you'll be able to see uh, the haptic patterns in action in real time. Bottom. Yep, we see the effects. You can also move that around. So we have the media where you can actually input the uh, YouTube URL. You can also um, insert uh, using uh, pre-made haptics from the library. Go ahead and yeah, core. And we'll play it and it just shows you. Yeah, and if we add it, yep everything just gets sent over as such and you can move it around uh, shown below here we'll create a new effect you'll notice that the editor is empty so let's go ahead and click the new effect button on the top left once that's clicked you'll notice that there's an effect one element at the uh, on the effect and layer panel on the left there's also an effect one element shown on the bottom over here in the timeline and here you see on the canvas in the center, you see that there's an image of a tax suit with some icons at the top. Let's take a look at the canvas in the center. Top of the canvas, we see different feedback points. We got the dot, path, and free path. We'll go ahead with the dot for this one. We'll just click on any point here on the vest. And the moment I do, you'll see a new layer is created under the effects here. And as we see here, this will show you what device it works with. Um, you can also adjust the intensity and transition effects here. And this will also give you um, more information about the specific layer that you just created. We'll go ahead and hit play. And by doing so, you'll see the, uh, the layer that you just put in taken to effect in real time shown here. And if you're also connected, or um, if you're also connected to the uh, Behaptics player, then uh, the vest that you're wearing will also rumble in real time as well. If we take a look at the bottom here, there's also a play button where you can also uh, click, and that'll show you the same effects in real time. Now let's take a look at uh, pathing. Uh, path allows you to uh, first define the uh, anchors of the path in which the haptic points will uh, move along. So in order to do so, let's click on path here. So let's choose the first anchor point over here, second anchor point here. We'll go with the third one over here. You can also click and drag as well too to different points. And by clicking play, you'll see it in action once again in the canvas. 
and also on, on the uh, right panel. You can also create a, a haptic path that goes from the front to the back as shown. Uh, let's add a couple of anchor points here. So this is the front of the vest and then click on the back. You'll see the dotted lines create a nice little uh, connection as such. If I hit play, it shows you how it travels. If we take a look at the uh, panel on the right side, yep, you see how it goes from the front and then moves to the back. I'll add another anchor point or several new points to show you um, in longer detail. So let's uh, focus on this area here. Click. Yep. So here we'll, uh, we'll also look at the same thing that we just talked about, but in greater detail by opening up the, uh, the planner mode. So start here or actually, so leave a couple of points here. Okay. And then we'll click on planner mode, which shows us the, uh, I guess the more precise path of, uh, of how, um, these hap haptic patterns are moving around. There we go. We'll add some more points to make it a little more interesting. So we'll focus on this area here again. Now let's take a look at the pathing for Tactosi for arms. The concept is uh, still the same. We'll go, we'll click on path. Start with the left side. Move over to the right and then back to the left and to the right and one more. And once again, we go to the bottom here. We click play and it'll show you how it moves around here. Next, let's take a look at the free path mode. It's very similar to the path mode, but the difference is instead of a very uh, rigid haptic pattern uh, pathway that goes from one anchor to another, for the uh, free path, you have uh, more uh, freedom to just kind of move around all over the place like such. And if we'll hit play, and then you kind of see how it's not really limited to different anchor points, but it just follows a path. You can uh, continue or further expand, uh, extend the endpoint uh, in uh, free path mode by clicking on the end part and then just uh, drawing from there. So you see that now we have a new endpoint over here. Click and everything's still the same. You're just simply changing um, the endpoint as such. So here, let's just focus on the um, path uh, free path mode for um, the attack uh, suit. So from here, the concept is the same. Just choose any point you want and then just move around. But you'll notice that my pen cuts off. And that's because where it cuts off is it's the uh, the end point. Um, I guess the limit to where the uh, haptics can be dragged onto in terms of the, for the front part. If I want to continue, I got to start on the, um, the back of the suit shown here. I'll just move my pen until I get the red dot. This is your starting point. So I'll click here and I'll just kind of drag over here to there. So you see how the red point switched over to this side. Now this is your new endpoint um, for the haptics. So let's give this a, a play. And once again, we'll take a look at this area here. It goes from the front to the back. So you could also use the uh, the planner mode to uh, make your uh, free pathing a lot more intuitive and a lot more precise. Um, as such, we'll create a little pattern here and then we'll uh, click on planner mode. And then you can click the endpoint and just kind of continue on from there as such. And if we play this. Next, we're going to look at the uh, attack gloves and the uh, the waveform, which is uh, exclusive to the attack gloves. So over here, um, so the way the waveform works is uh, quite similar to the uh, dot function. However, the difference is um, the uh, waveform actually uh, provides you with a lot more detailed, more um, specific haptic pattern, simply because it's uh, sensations to your hands. So. I'll click on certain points just like I would 
um, using the, uh, the dot mode. And if you look over here, you can also adjust the uh, duration as well as the uh, type of uh, the, uh, the waveform um, to be used. So let's just click on that. And as you can see, it activates. Now let's briefly talk about uh, adjusting the layer. Uh, so if we look over, let's click on the, uh, the vest section here. So if we take a look at the, uh, the properties, um, if you um, look at the bottom over here, you can actually uh, adjust the uh, intensity um, and also you can add in uh, transition effects. Um, we'll go with the fade in, fade out. You can actually um, move the, um, the length of the transition effect as well as the, uh, the duration um, as well too, as such. Let's go back to the tack gloves to uh, look at the uh, waveform in uh, more detail. So if we look at the properties, you notice that we can actually um, adjust the uh, duration of the, uh, the haptic vibration anywhere from five millisecond all the way to 40 milliseconds. And we can also um, adjust the, uh, the waveform uh, intensity, so to speak. Uh, so for something like this, the intensity of the waveform will remain constant. Uh, so the intensity, I mean, it, it doesn't change. It's pretty self-explanatory. If we choose increasing, then the moment it starts, um, it's gradually, the intensity is gradually going to get stronger uh, during that time frame. And if we choose decreasing, then the intensity starts off strong or whatever it starts off with, but it decreases near the end of its life cycle. So let's uh, briefly just uh, recap on the uh, the layer and the effects over here. So on the left uh, panel here, you'll see everything under, uh, this is our effect one. Everything listed under here is the, um, the layer that goes underneath effect one. And as mentioned in the beginning, this uh, shows you um, what device uh, this layer is associated with, the um, the type of uh, the the haptic. This one's dot. This one's a uh, path, and also the uh, the intensity and any um, transition effects that uh, are applied to uh, this uh, this layer. Now let's uh, briefly talk about uh, sorting these layers shown here. First, you can actually uh, switch the um, the sequence. Um, or I guess the, the order as such by clicking and dragging um, however you want. And we can also um, sort uh, these layers as well too by clicking on this uh, triple dot here. So let's take a look at, uh, so there's three types of uh, layer sorting. We can evenly distribute, uh, accelerate or decelerate. Let's look at the first one. Uh, look what happens when I click all layers. By clicking on that, we see that everything is um, organized in such a sequence shown here. And if we look at accelerate, this will uh, all, this essentially uh, shortens the uh, duration of the haptics. Uh, click on all layers, as you can see here, it gets shorter over time. Then if we hit decelerate, it does uh, the opposite. So we'll click here. So you see how it starts very um, short, but then over time the duration increases. And uh, lastly, you can also filter um, based on the uh, different uh, feedback types, so like uh, dot layers or um, even path layers, uh, etc. Or you can even uh, filter uh, based on the uh, device uh, as well too. And this applies not just to uh, uh, the evenly distribute uh, layer sorting, but also with accelerating and decelerating as well. Let's uh, quickly talk about the um, layer setting. Uh, just click on this here and then move down to layer setting. And here you can basically perform the same function. Um, you can adjust the uh, duration of uh, your layer um, to all of the ones that you've created. You can move it around. Um, you can also apply um, one layer uh, to be uniform with uh, everything else or more precisely everything else to be more uniform with that chosen layer and such. Um, you can also work on transition effects uh, here as well too. Uh, so just gets, it's just uh, another, uh, I guess, um, way for you to make adjustments when it comes to layers. And lastly, you can also uh, adjust the uh, layers transition uh, all at once. Um, you can use the fade in, 
Um, and you can also use fade out. You can also do uh, fade in and out simultaneously. This depends on uh, which option you want to go with. Now that we've uh, made all our layers, let's see how they all work in unison when we are uh, playing an effect. So let's uh, close this up. So there's um, three, uh, so you can check this out um, in uh, three different areas. One is in this tab here by clicking this. So we see the effect in action. Up here, you see the effect in action or simply by double clicking uh, here. So we're basically seeing all the uh, layers work together to create that effect. Similar for this, uh, you can go ahead and change the, uh, the name of the effect as well as the duration of the effect. So we'll call this uh, official effect, save. Um, and let's uh, change duration to, uh, sure, let's go with um, two seconds for this. And lastly, you can also adjust the, uh, the length, or should I say the duration of this effect as well, um, by adjusting it here in the timeline. Now that we've created our um, effect, we can actually uh, create a new effect by clicking on this, named uh, Effect 2. And it'll also show up in the, uh, on the timeline here. But sometimes uh, when it's created, it's going to um, uh, be covering the uh, initial uh, effect that you had in place. That's really no problem. You just have to simply click and drag it down. And um, as mentioned earlier, you can always uh, make adjustments uh, to its duration and whatnot. Uh, when you have multiple uh, effects, you can actually uh, group them as a uh, single group. So, for example, uh, we have one, two effects over here. So, we'll take a look at the timeline and let's group them together. Um, to do it, uh, you just have to click on uh, one of the effects, um, hold down control on your keyboard, click on the uh, second effect, right click, and um, you just need to click uh, group. So now they're grouped together. And once that is done, they act as a, a single unit. So even though I just clicked on one, they're both, uh, I guess, um, selected simply because they all belong to the same group. So if I uh, change the duration, it's going to uh, decrease or increase accordingly. So you can create new haptics uh, from the start, or you can actually incorporate uh, pre-made or pre-existing uh, haptics, um, like so. We'll, uh, go to the, um, the insert that's shown on the right over here, click on it, and this section shows you uh, previously made haptic patterns that you could utilize, or you can go to the library um, to uh, have access to uh, pre-made haptics made by the haptics. Um, and you can even look up uh, specific um, haptic uh patterns that uh that, that that you desire so for this one let's i'm, I'm just gonna look for recoil so yes that's uh, one way to integrate uh, new haptics okay so let's go ahead and add a new effect uh, or a haptic pattern um so let's go to the library um, um, we'll choose one of the uh, actions here uh, so yeah, here we have a list of uh, available uh, pre-made haptics from B-Haptics. Uh, once again, it shows you what devices uh, this haptics is for. Um, let's go ahead and uh, choose a floor heel. Once again, it shows you um, duration, um, any tags associated, and you can also click on the play button to get a preview of what the, uh, the pattern is like, as you see here. Um, and also you can click on detail to get any specific details um, that you would like to know about this. But anyways, if everything is all good, just uh, click on the, um, the add button here. And now it's uh, integrated as part of your uh, effect. It also uh, shows up down here in the, um, the timeline. And once again, you can make adjustments. You can move it around. Um, everything that we discussed. So just how, just like how you can uh, bring uh, a haptic patterns from the library, you can also add new uh, haptic patterns or effects into the library as well. Uh, this can be done either through um, this add to library button, 
or this little uh, triple dot button over here at the library or simply by uh, right clicking uh, here to go add to library. So let's just go ahead and uh, add a, uh, an effect to a library. Uh, go with here, add to library. So we see there's two different effects here. I can go ahead and uh, save uh, each individual effect individually or I could save them both simultaneously into the library as well. However, keep in mind that if you decide to save them simultaneously like so, then the next time when you bring up this effect from the library, they're going to show up as a pair instead of individually. So with that said, um, actually I'll just group them together. You get to set the official name. Uh, we'll go with official effect, uh, same thing. Choose a location. In this case, you want to save it in library. You can also save it in different um, subcategories uh, there as well too. You can also write a short description. We'll just write library. And once everything is set, you click add. Uh, we could also um, add haptics to a specific uh, media file if you choose to. Uh, the steps are quite simple. Uh, look over to your right side. You click on the uh, media button over here and you can choose. We'll go with the YouTube URL. I just type in or I copy and paste the address. I click import. And if I hit play, you will see the effects working. So once we've imported the uh, the media of our choice, uh, we can use um, this uh, section over here to apply haptics or effects to our desired uh, time frame. So here, uh, like we've done thus far, you can make adjustments to the duration. Um, you can set it. You can set the effects to go off at uh, specific time. Uh, frames. Um, you can also enlarge the video if you want to get a better view uh, or you can actually go to monitor which is uh, showing up right here to show you um, precisely where the effects are taking place. So let's uh, go to play. You can see everything is working in real time. That is how you integrate haptics and effects.